smooth coastline, okay, in which case there's not lots of little bits to go inside. Whereas if you go to like Norway, which is all over the shop, um, then that's a really long coastline. It might not look as long, but when you get in all those little bits and stretch it out. So um, I, I started doing a project on this, but rather than using the coastline, it's about mapping around a fir cone um, and then drawing it onto graph paper and then from that um, measuring. But rather than just measuring, I got the students, because I'm a bit weird, to make little dividers out of licorice and cocktail sticks, just because it's a bit of fun. Um, and then they use that, and then they adjust the measurement of those for the coastlines. But what they end up with is some fantastic work, which is really, really mathsy, but again, they, they really, really love. And um, so you can see you've got the fur cone here, they're looking at mapping around the fur cone, and they're doing, um, and then they're um, measuring the points and drawing and working out what measurement um, scale gives the longest fur cone coastline. Does that make any sense at all? That sounded really <laughs> weird on that. But um, then this one at the top is fantastic. This is by Shoe Called Neve. I'll show you her work later. But just totally, I promise you, totally um, by herself. She started, had to see on her phone. Uh, I thought, oh God, I've got to turn her phone off. But what she was doing, she got interested in um, air, um, plane crashes and uh, a bit of a dark subject. But what she started doing is overlaying seat numbers and passenger numbers onto her drawing um, and, so they, and, and so she started printing out these little numbers um, and um, putting <coughs> and drawing the sort of um, air, airline seats on top of things that sounded even more weird but that's what our students do you know, they're all a, bit, all a bit strange so that was really good here's some more sort of stuff the fur cone fractals so this is what maths is in in my school lots of graph paper and drawing fur cones and measuring coastlines uh, some more here you can see what I mean, so they do one drawing and they measure around the gaps in different formats and then they work out the sort of ratios from there. Just to prove a point, we do do proper, proper drawings as well. Yeah, it's not all like um, graph and stuff. Um, the other thing we do, which um, again, I would always, always recommend and um, always try to get away with not, not paying them if I can, because I'm a bit tight like that, but getting in ex-students who are doing stuff in industry that involves maths, because they hear me and the other lecturers spout on all the time like you've got to do this and this is really important but so this guy here Alex Unsworth um, yeah, he was a student of ours got on really well with Alex stayed in touch with him sort of ever since he left really sort of top guy and he works at, um, in the film industry at Pinewood Studios and so he'll, he'll, he'll always come in he's a good guy like that and he'll talk to the students and he'll show them scale drawings um, uh, maquettes for, for sets he works on um, a Star Wars film, he works on Bond films, he's worked on the recent Alien films. So straight away the students like him because he's like really cool and he's involved in films that they like. And then he shows them all this stuff and then, because we've asked him to, he then says it's really important that you get this right and that right because if you get this wrong it's going to cost a lot of money and you'll never be employed again. And he, he says things like that and, and, and they listen to him. Yeah? Uh, we've got this other lady who comes in, uh, she's only been twice, she's really good actually. When she first came in I thought she would give me a bit of a be a bit dry but she's really good she's a poet and she collects maps and the students um she gives out all these weird maps for all the students and they have to do these activities by taking things out of them and creating poetry but then from that we then do more mapping so we use maps a lot maps uh, we like maps um uh just a few examples of students work so this is uh, lauren king from last year who did a project where she uh, sounds dodgy, uh, but she literally sort of stalked people, sort of just found someone in the street and followed them, um, and then on her phone sort of GPS tracked it and turned them into uh, map pieces of maps. Yeah, again, maps, lots of maps. Um, this is Vanessa, who, who did stuff about the colonisation of Mars. And so she had to do lots of research in terms of um, atmospheres, um, uh, geography and um, all sorts of stuff you can see from her sketchbook pages here you know she's, she's a student who didn't come here expecting to do a sort of sciencey mathsy course and then she didn't but she went in that direction um, this is some of her work from that as well you can see there's lots of lovely sort of layers of um, intriguing mathematical calculations going on this is 118 elements by the graphic students um, we'll do a chem uh, um, periodic table, this is the um, interactive media isometric measurements again moving on um, and 
when the University of Arts came here to do the uh, moderation to check that we were assessing right and everything else, they really picked up on the Mars Award. And since then, I've been asked to do several, a few, um, 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 what's it called? Yeah, staff development sessions for University of Arts London. Um, and I'll do it with, with uh, another lady called Elise Ruffle, who's from Exeter College. And it's really a day of people from around the country who want to embed maths more into their art education come we do all sorts of cool stuff so this is these are some of the examples of the um, activities that we do and I've, you know, it's been really positive and it just means that the West Suffolk College um, as, a, as an organization are, are being held up as a sort of place that does these things and then um, I met a guy from Oxford College who said that um, one of the presentations I gave to the conference UAL conference he'd taken that back and as a college they were um, replicating some of the Mars Awards things and taking it further. I uh, know other colleges have been sort of inspired as well. So that's kind of really important that people have sort of seen that it can be done and that really good, exciting, sort of um, inquisitive work comes from that. So from that, this gets a bit cheesy now, so um, <coughs> this has made me both very popular and very, very unpopular. Um, but one night I thought, oh, sorry, I'll chuck, I'll chuck, chuck uh, the Mars Award in for one of the Times Educational Awards. Um, you know, Coast had finished at that point, so I had some free. I had some free time, so um, I sat there tapping away. Um, made it sound sound good, but I didn't lie. It was all as it was. Um, sent it off, and um, the main, the, the you know, the big, the big success was that we were shortlisted. So I was running around very excited about that. Um, that was really, really fantastic. Uh, got invited to the um, awards ceremony. Has anyone been to any of the TS awards ceremonies? Yeah, it's like sort of last days of Rome. Uh, it's like, it's literally people walking around with bottles of champagne and uh, oh, it's like the whole world's, you know, going to end tomorrow and everyone's having their last bit of enjoyment. It's, it's, you know, there, there was no shortage of money in education that night, I can tell you. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I went along to that and there's Rob Beckett, the comedian, and to cut a long story short, we won. Yeah. And we haven't mentioned it since. <laughs> you wouldn't even know we've won. Um, but Lindsay is uh, fantastic at, um, on, on Twitter, and um, and uh, it went, it went, it really picked up lots of stuff online, and uh, it was fantastic for the college, and fantastic for my team, and fantastic for the students. It's really good to get recognition, and. Um, and it was a really great thing. So it's really good that it's got to that point. However, it did go one step further. Um, so I don't know if any of you have seen this, but on, um, on Prime Minister's questions, uh, about a week or two later, our MP, Joe Churchill, um, posed, posed a question. Uh, and they never are questions, are they? They're like a sort of statement with some sort of loose question on the end. Uh, but it was about... Basically, um, so Joe Churchill, the St Edmundsbury um, MP, posed a question to Theresa May at Prime Minister's question, saying, would she congratulate West Suffolk College? Um, Nikos got a mention, not me. Um, uh, not on bitch about that. Um, uh, <laughs> about, about the winning of the award and about the Mars Award and how it drove inquisitive minds. And then Theresa May stood up. And she actually, she actually spoke quite a lot, saying, well done, West Suffolk College, you're amazing, you know. Um, and this is what all, all college, yeah, the, 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 the strap line that you'll see where it is, all colleges should aspire to these, I should, I should know it by now, shouldn't I? But it's, anyway, it was something really, really good. So we, we milked that for all it was worth. And um, you'll see it everywhere. So, um, but it, the reason why it happened is because I think as a college, and certainly, um, certainly the principal, the governors, the, the sort of senior management team, and, and the whole organisation, we have been really good at um, working with, um, people who are very, very sort of valuable to us um, outside the college, and we've been good friends to people, and people have been good friends to us. And Joe Churchill, you know, um, has been has been a very visible person. I think it's safe to say she's been very, um, very involved in the college. She she she's here. She's always really pleasant. Um, she's always found time to speak to the students, and she's um, and obviously she gets on well with the uh, the principal. Hence, that is why she obviously, I think, uh, like Nikos, our principal, um, told about the award. And that was why, you know, she felt that it was appropriate to uh, raise it at the sort of highest level of UK government. And um, that's, why, that's why that little bit of time happened. Because as a college, we've worked hard 
to um, make friends and work positively with people. And so I'm sure you'll do that in your own organisations, and that's something that is, uh, puts us in a good, a good place. Um, from, from that, the stuff about all... all um, and obviously the Times really like this because it was highlighting their award um, and saying that this is what all colleges should aspire to. And it was really making, giving uh, value and credibility to the TES awards. And, on, and it went very, very big on, uh, on uh, the internet. There was lots of stuff about, um, about the TES awards and the value of them. And as a college, this and Theresa May said that. And it, went, it was really good for FE as a whole, I'd say, because um, I've, I've been told since it's the first time that a sort of um, a, a quality of teaching in FE has been raised at Prime Minister's questions and been responded to in such a kind of full way by a Prime Minister and for, for us as an organisation and, and for the whole of FE because we, we are often forgotten about you know that, that was a uh, that was a great thing you know no no harm came from it so that's really good and um, you know so that was great um, I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures from our end of year show so our end of year show is in the United House at the moment 390 whatever students showing their work and what's really great for me is when I walk around I see the stuff <laughs> That the students have been learning in the lessons whether it's a GCSE lesson a functional skills lesson an art lesson coming through into their artwork so this is um Holly Mayhew's work and this is all about calculations of chaos theory and then she 3d prints them um, really fantastic uh, work this is um, Neve Rooney who I showed, um, showed you her work earlier with the um, uh, plane crash seats well, she took that one step further and looked at um, this, the plane crashing in. Um, she's a musician and turned the uh, numbers, of the um, seat numbers and passion numbers into sheet music and then turned that into some pieces of music. That a lot of calculation. So it's like maths becoming music, which I just think is really fantastic. This is Laura Stiff's work. We took the students to, um, uh, over 50 students to New York in March. And uh, while she was there, because she got really into the fractal measurement stuff, she did the same in New York. So she plotted her movements around the sort of boroughs of New York that we went to. And then from that, she's produced silk screen uh, fabric prints based on that. And, then, and this isn't us telling the students to do it. This is them wanting to do it. Yeah, it's not us. There's no maths isn't in, uh, mentioned. It's the students feeling that this is the way they want to take their work. Um, so, uh, the next steps are uh, more integration between the uh, different curriculum areas, the um, art staff and the maths team, which is developing. Uh, more, I want to see more business skills, students understand a bit more about commerce and numbers, um, about the sort of parameters and opportunities of business and, and, and that sort of things. Widening scope of institutions, so we're trying to sort of build more connections with people like the Science Museum things like that, v &A Museum. Um, we are also doing literature-centred assignments, so there is talk about starting a, a, another award, which will be a, um, uh, like a, like a literature-based one, um, which we might do in like um, term one or something. Um, so that's, again, and people want to do this. This isn't me standing in the meeting saying, right, we're doing this. It's people saying, let's do this. Now people going, oh yeah, that sounds good. It just gets that, let's do it. Um, that would be cool sort of atmosphere and for a manager that's absolute kind of gold dust because what you what you know as we all know staff who moan and don't want to do things are, are no fun at all so i've put on here as well i would strongly recommend watching some of these just because they're quite good fun so they're on your sheet hopefully they're printed out okay um so we've got three minutes this is going to be a quickie really quick one um, I think I've, I've sort of timed it not too bad. Uh, what new initiatives do you have to promote maths? How do you know if they are working? What are the barriers? What could you do? Okay, now, the one thing I don't want to hear about is posters. You know, oh, we put up loads of posters. What are you doing to kind of get un in the hearts and minds and under the radar and kind of, what are you doing as an organisation to just get people doing it naturally? Okay. Um, I've been told I must keep to my time, so um, we've got like say two minutes on this. Okay. Um, if any of you do want to watch any of the other hyperlinks that I haven't brought up, they're on your printouts. Look, yeah, watch them at your own your own amusement. Okay, two minutes off you go. Fast, fast, fast. <laughs>